With so many menstrual cup choices out there and the conflicting information on size and guidelines from the brands, it's hard to know what size menstrual cup you are. That's where Put A Cup In It comes in and we're here to help you navigate the very confusing sizing guidelines that are out there. So keep watching our video, it's a long one, but we promise it's worth it. Are you a one or two, or maybe, an A or a B, or perhaps, you're a small or a regular. There are so many different names for the sizes for menstrual cups, and not to mention, there's different information from each brand on where you fit into their sizes. There's no sizing standard in the menstrual cup world. So for one brand, their size one or their size A or their size small might be very close or even the same as another brand size large or their B or their regular and it's hard to know how one do we even measure our vaginas I can't help it if I've got a heavy flow and a wide set vagina it's based typically on diameter when these brands talk about their sizing and if you fit one size small for one brand or they're large on another brand so this is where we come into the put a cup in it territory because we have made so many different resources that help you not only find the right size but find the right fit and all these other things that go into picking a menstrual cup. Let's talk about how brands size their cups first because that's where we need to start before we go any further. Nerd alert! Typically a size one or a size small or a size A as different brands call them will say if you're under 30 and you haven't given birth then you are the size one and if you are over 30 and or you have given birth, you're a size two or size large or size regular. <laughs> See, <laughs> it's very confusing. Obviously this is not a black and white guideline and not to mention it's not always clear what they mean by giving birth, but one of those things I'll clear it for you now. When a brand says on their sizing guidelines that you have given birth, they mean you've had a full-term pregnancy. They do not mean that you've had a vaginal delivery. So if you have had a cesarean section and you were full term, your muscles in your body still prepared for labor, everything kind of relaxed and, and got looser in your pelvic floor area. I am not a pelvic floor expert, but this is just my understanding of how this works. <laughs> and so you would pick the larger diameter. All the brands are talking about when they say size one or size two is diameter. They are not factoring in the length of a cup and the length is actually more important than the diameter, but we do wanna get you the right cup in both areas. Again, it gets confusing, but we're gonna help you through it. In the diameter world for a menstrual cup, when you're talking about a small, usually starts at about 35 millimeters across, that's a wide the diameter, and goes upwards to about 43 millimeters, which is a pretty big difference. In fact, this brand, Super Jenny, this is their small. It's 43 millimeters, and some, several of our other large brands are also 43 millimeters across, not this one. But there are several that are 43 millimeters across, so there's a gray area where some of them are the same size as the size two, and then the size twos or the size larges go up to about 48 millimeters. We don't have some sort of caliper or measurement device that will say how wide our vaginas are. And honestly, you don't really need that. There are a lot of things that you can do to understand what might work for you ahead of picking a menstrual cup. Even better, if you're already a menstrual cup user, you'll have way more of an idea of what will work for you diameter-wise than someone who's never tried a cup. But what size tampon you use has nothing to do with what size menstrual cup you'll use. So if you used a super tampon before using a menstrual cup or trying one, that does not mean you need a super-sized cup. <laughs> When you're picking the diameter and you're going for you're going based on that under 30 or over 30 or given birth or having given birth, another thing you really need to keep in mind is if you have a uh, a healthy muscular tone pelvic floor. If you've had a baby, that might not be the case, but if you have worked on it through pelvic floor therapy, perhaps you do. And most of us don't really understand what our pelvic floor toneness or health or uh, abilities are until we use a menstrual cup. So one of the hints that you have a weaker pelvic floor could be that you are urinating when you jump or sneeze. You wet your pants. Well, even the best of us has an occasional accident. 
So you may say there you have weaker pelvic floor muscles, you probably need a wider cup to keep it in place. Another thing that makes picking a menstrual cup size confusing is that rather than sizing by diameter, some brands actually size by flow, how much the cup actually holds. So then rather than saying there's a sizing issue for before giving birth, under 30, after giving birth, over 30, they'll say if you have a light flow to pick a smaller cup and if you have a heavier flow to pick a larger cup. This is also not exactly the best way to pick a cup. Really you want something that fits comfortably and stays in place and lengthwise again, and we'll get to that, fits inside your vaginal canal. And with a cup, if you are a super heavy bleeder, you do want to consider the capacity of the cup and how much it holds. But that really comes later. You want something to fit first. So if you have a super light period, you may not have the muscle floor tone to hold the smaller cup. And yeah, you don't need the bigger cup's capacity, but you need it to stay in place. And that's really what I'm trying to get across. The cup widthwise needs to stay in place as you're wearing it, not slipping down. So you want the diameter to match that floor tone and that vaginal muscle tone because you can always expand. Your vagina can always expand to hold something. Come on, think for a minute about what goes in and what comes out. It can stretch, but it cannot clench around a cup that's too small. We do not have these massive cavernous vaginas, so if you've had a delivery, and I don't care if you delivered a 15 pound baby or you delivered a six pound baby, that has nothing to do with where your vagina is in terms of what it can hold and what it can fit. So the, the baby did not blow out your vagina, just like in my sessions, I usually tell a joke that when you turn 30 and you blow out your candles, your vagina goes and expands to a size two vagina, that's not how it works either. So. Again, we want to dispel some of the myths and the misconceptions about how to pick a menstrual cup size and get down to what really matters. Taking a quick break from this riveting video to make sure to remind everyone watching to subscribe to our channel. It just takes one second. Hit the subscribe button and you will get our videos on an irregular basis. When we upload them, you'll be the first to know. So getting down to what really matters is all about length. I want to get out one of my prime examples. This is the Lily Cup brand. And Lily Cup brand is, is a great cup, it's super soft, I really like the cup. But it doesn't work for the vast majority of people who use cups, mainly because it's too long. It is the longest cup on our chart. If you do our menstrual cup comparison chart, and we're linking that in our video description, make sure you sort by length and the longest top and, uh, at the top of the chart and the shortest at the bottom. Lily Cup will come up first. It is just a long cup. Diva Cup's not far behind, and Diva Cup's one of the most available cups on the market, so a lot of people have a negative experience with Diva Cup because they find it's too long for them, they feel discomfort while they're wearing the cup, and it's just because they feel the cup because it's too long for them. And this all has to do with the location of our cervix. This will be a quick demonstration, but you need to know where your cervix is when you are picking a menstrual cup, probably well above how wide or not you are, and that's such a crude term, but that's what I need to say. How do you find out where your cervix is? It's simple, you may not like it, but you need to do it. You need to measure where your cervix is. While you're in the shower is a good time to do this. Stick a finger inside, reach and locate your cervix. Your cervix will feel very similar to the tip of your nose. It has like this spongy, um, resistance kind of feeling. Not everyone can find their cervix, but if, if you can't find your cervix, it's most likely because it's too high, which is actually good. So reach inside and locate the cervix. If you can't reach it, we'll hopefully assume that it's high. Um, and it could be like towards the side or towards the back or towards the front, depending on where your cervix is tilting, if it's tilting at all. So find that. And then what I would say is if you can see this, <laughs> Put a thumb right where your um, inner lips end. So inside the inner lip, place a thumb and then remove that. Take this and measure from the tip of your finger to your thumb and then take those numbers. We use inches or we use a metric version. We have both on our chart. Any cup below that number is gonna work for you. I should add, you should do this during your cycle even do it on the first day of your cycle and the last day of your cycle 
and see what the difference is and use the lowest measurement because you want a cup that will fit on the lowest point where your cervix is and it moves up and down during your cycle. So use the lowest number that you receive during your measuring. So that is how to find where your cervix is and measure accurately. Now we want to get to a capacity. And let's say you found where your cervix is and you have a good idea of whether you would be a small or a large in our menstrual cup world, but you have a super heavy flow. If you have a super heavy flow, you may be emptying your cup as much as every hour. This is extremely rare. A menstrual cup usually holds about 30 milliliters for the size two. And the average menstrual cycle is between 30 and 60 milliliters. So if you're thinking about that, you would only fill up a cup once or even twice over if you're on the high end of average. But there are some people who bleed so much, over 200 milliliters a cycle, and during that very first heavy day or second day, even a 30 milliliter capacity cup will not hold what they're outputting. So finding a cup that works within all of the other parameters that also has a high capacity could be worth it for you. We do have on our chart, you can sort by capacity and sort by the highest capacity. Marula will hold 50 milliliters. I don't have one here, but um, Super Jenny holds about 41. And this one, their size two is a, quite a high diameter, but the Marula is a little bit slimmer and um, another one is Yuki. So you want to kind of do this. Actually, if you're into photography, there's a, there's a triangle of things you need to achieve for a good picture. You need the perfect triangle of ISO and f-stop and shutter speed. And so it's exactly the same for menstrual cups. You want to get it in a range where it's the size, diameter, plus the length, plus the capacity. And if you can find one that fits within that triangle, then you have your perfect menstrual cup. But, and all the ones on the market are too wide or too long for you, pick the one that holds the most you can find within those other two parameters, and then just empty it more often. It's not ideal during the first or second heavy day, um, but you can always use period underwear or backup cloth pads if you need them, and that goes for anyone who has a cycle who might have a heavy flow or some light leaks. And this all is more confusing because each brand has their own designation of what small or large is. So again, Rather than trusting what they say is small or large, just use our menstrual cup comparison chart and look and see what their actual measurements are. You'd be surprised how different they are, but also how narrow that, that distinction is. So even a size two, and I'm always gonna say this to anyone who asks, if you are confused and you aren't sure if it's gonna be a size one or size two, go with a size two, because again, you can accommodate but you cannot shrink and hold on to a cup. First is length. Find a cup that fits within your vaginal canal comfortably with everything inside. You can always trim the stem if you need to, if that's going to be too long. Then pick one, size one or size two, size A or size B, <laughs> size small or regular, or mini or original, like there's a million terms, and pick the one that fits diameter-wise. This is, <laughs> this is a long video, but I think it's really important for people to understand that you don't need to go based on the brand's wording because it is, it's just, there's such a gray area. And all of this to say that if you are completely, completely overwhelmed with your choices, just take our quiz. The, the quiz asks you nine questions, some of which include your cervical height, and I just told you how to measure it and the toneness of your pelvic floor, um, any, any sort of urine leaks, birth history, and all of those things together, if you answer those questions to the best of your ability as accurately as possible, we can actually give you a list of cups that are most likely to work for you. And our quiz has really fantastic results um, and it has a great reputation for being really accurate overall. But if you're an experienced cup user, you'll even know better um, out of the results what to pick or just use our chart. We have so many resources and we have our group. That's it. Thank you so much for watching YouTube. Subscribe to our channel. It takes just a minute. Helps us out a lot and you'll get our videos first when they publish. And also leave us a comment, like our video. Thanks so much. What? <laughs>